Um, yes, welcome. Thank you for coming to my talk. Uh, this is late at the conference. I'm going to talk about Think, a temporal graph analytics library for Apache Flink. Uh, it's a library that I made while graduating from the Eindhoven University of Technology. Uh, and I currently work at ING. Um, so what I'm going to talk about first a bit about ING. Then I will present the use case why this is actually useful. I will follow with the explanation of what is actually a temporal graph and what kind of algorithms can you run on temporal graphs. Then I will continue with Think, so the how Think works. Uh, then I will present one of Think's algorithms to get the concept of how it works, and I will present a piece of code. So um, ING, I think you've all seen Fred's keynote speech yesterday. Um, so I won't go into too much detail about that. We use Flink at ING, and Boss and Martijn will talk about that later today. Uh, I would really recommend, recommend going there if you're interested in that. Um, so the use case. My dad lives in Breda, which is right here. And every day he travels to work to Arnhem. And when you're at 7, p 7 a.m., you look at the best route that you could take. It would present, Google Maps would present this road over here, with some small traffic congestion here. However, if you would drive this road and you will get to this point at Den Bos after half an hour, there would be a major traffic congestion here, which happens there every day. So we know this is happening. So why don't we? Uh, Calculate and Google Maps is pretty smart. So when you eventually get here, it says, "Well, there's traffic congestion. You can drive around it." But actually, I wanted to know when I was starting, because if I would take this road, where there is a, also a traffic congestion, I would be freely going through this road, and I would be there at the end faster than when I would have taken this road that has been suggested by Google. Um, so yeah, we know this data. We have the ANWD. Uh, the traffic prognosis that's released for every next day. So we can we could potentially use that data to see where the traffic justin, congestions occur. Um, now I'm going to talk about the temporal graphs. Um, I'm not going to talk about these kind of graphs. I'm going to talk about graphs where the nodes represent the objects and the edges represent relations between those objects. And with that, you can basically have anything modeled as a graph. For an example, I have here my family. Um, I'm the son of Renier, and I'm the son of Monique, which are my parents, and they are married to each other. We can expand this graph by adding my sisters to the graph, and eventually also adding my friends to the graph. And with that, you can do all sorts of things. I also have here a model of the Dutch railroad network as a graph, where the train stations and the intersections are nodes, and the rail tracks are the edges. And with that, we can do also computations on that. I will get to that later on. So a temporal graph is a normal graph where the edges have time labels on them. In this, I make two different temporal graphs, a sequence graph and an interval graph. With the sequence graph that you see here, you can see it as a text message network. I send a text message, and it happens at one instance of a time. And with an interval graph, you can think of a telephone network. Every edge starts and ends at a specific point, and during that time, something is happening. Um, and when we have these temporal graphs, we can also think about temporal shortest path. Um, there are many different definitions of temporal shortest paths. You could, for example, think of what is the earliest arrival time that I can get somewhere, or I want to get somewhere at a specific time, when is the latest time that I can leave? Or, for example, when you're flying and every uh, flight from one airport to another, uh, you want to know what is the least amount of time that I have, have, will have to spend in the air. These are all things that you can have with temporal uh, shortest path. When we have this graph, our temporal shortest path would be this for the earliest arrival time. And we take into account that a new edge, for example, this edge, can only start after the previous edge has ended. And this would not seem that straightforward, because normally when you're talking about temporal shortest, or shortest path, you would think of the path with the least amount of hops. And this is fundamentally different in temporal graphs. Um, when we have these temporal shortest paths, we can also think about temporal centrality metrics. And that's where it gets interesting. 
For example, when we have the between us, which is a centrality that quantifies the number of times a node acts as a bridge along the shortest path between two other nodes, we can look at the Dutch railroad network and think of Utrecht of as a node with a very high between us. This is interesting because it also shows the importance of the node in the graph, in the temporal aspect. If we would have to remove that road, we probably would have a big problem in the Dutch railroad network because lots of things would break. Another centrality metric is the closeness, which represents the average length of the shortest path between one node and all the other nodes in a graph. And then again, when we look at the railroad network, Utrecht Central Station is also as a as a low closeness, which indicates the importance. Because from Utrecht Central, you can get to almost anywhere with a low average amount of time. Um, and for this graph, this may be straightforward. You can very clearly see what would be high between these nodes or low closeness. But this becomes a bit more difficult when you have larger graphs, which cannot be presented in a two-day plane. Um, so for these things, I made think. Um, it's a library on top of Apache Flink. It's uh, written on top of the Batch API. I know that most of you people here are here for the streaming API, uh, so sorry about that. Um, uh, it has a couple of temporal graph algorithms that you can easily use. So one of the focuses was also about usability. You can extend the graph library to uh, create your own temporal graph algorithms. Um, it supports distributed processing. It's part of the Flink ecosystem. Uh, and it's written in Java. It uses Jelly, uh, which was uh, the basic choice because Jelly already has a lot of features built in uh, and it's already built in Apache Flink. Uh, and it has a great support of iterative graph processing. Um, are any of you guys here familiar with Jelly? Can I see some hands? Just a few. OK. So I'll talk a bit about the signal collect model. It's one of the models that F Jelly uses for iterative graph processing. It's also known as the think like a verdict model, where you reason from a verdict. So a verdict can have a value, an edge can have a value. And in every iteration, which are called supersets, which you can see here, every node can signal a message, and it the next super step, it can receive the message. And if you use that method, you can very easily do iterative graph processing in a distributed manner. As an example of this, I have here a temporal graph. And the goal is to find the shortest temporal path from the source node 1, which is here, to all the other nodes in the temporal graph. Um, we have a signal step, which indicates when the edge starting time is larger or equal then the verdict value, then we send a signal to the neighbor node. And we have a collect step, which indicates when the edge time is smaller than the verdict value, we update the verdict value with the smallest arrival time. Or the sm yeah. We first initialize the verdict values. For the source node, uh, we take a 0. And for the other nodes, we take infinite. That's to indicate when something is smaller, then the verdict value we know, and, and it's not infinite, we know that it's reachable. And then we start the signal process. So we start at 1. It will send three signals to 2, 3, and 4. And then at the collect step, it will collect these messages. And it will store the ending times in the verdict value list. So you see here, node 2 has an ending time of 3. Node 4 has an ending time of uh, 5. That's this one. And node 3 has an ending time of 4. Uh, at this point, in the collect set, it will also send a new signal. And that signal will be sent from node 2 and node 3. Um, it won't be sent from node 4 because it doesn't have any outgoing edges. And then at the collect step, it will uh, look at the Verix values again. One will not store a new value because it already has, already has a value of 0. And it won't be smaller than that. 4, however, gets uh, a 4, which is smaller than the 5 that you already have. So we store it, the program converges, and we have all the earliest arrival times from that point. Now, if we go back to our use case, we can see that this, uh, this, program, uh, of this, this problem of the Google Maps is really just an earliest arrival time problem. And when we would take the Dutch uh, highway network and we would model it as a graph with intersections and the uh, the exit and the entrances of the highway as vertices, 
and we have the edges as the roads. And then we model the roads with the timings that it would take to actually travel between those nodes. We can simply just execute the earliest arrival time algorithm on this graph, and we can know in time what is the fastest road from A to B. Um, I'll show you a bit of code, how this is actually done. Um, this code is an example from the Rita dataset. It is a dataset which contains all the flights in America um, from the month February. Um, let's see. Uh, yeah, we have an input and an output, which is the Rita dataset. We create it into uh, a dataset of the type double string string double double double. Um, in the CSV file, that, is the, that indicates the, the source and the target node. Uh, we have a double here, which indicates the starting time. And we have a couple of doubles here, which indicate the ending time. Uh, in the Rita data set, the ending times are uh, normal timing, so 2 p.m., 1 p.m. So we have to do some cleaning for that. Uh, That's what happens here. Um, luckily, Flink has all this stuff built in, so we can do a simple mapping to convert these timings to actually the Unix time. And if we have that, we can create a, a temporal graph uh, with these types just with a simple function. When we have this temporal graph, we can run the single source shortest temporal path earliest arrival time algorithm upon the graph. And that's all there is to it. Uh, at the end, we have a bit of a uh, we have another mapping, and that's to make the timings more, yeah, more clear. Um, and I can show you a small example of that if I have enough time. Yeah, I have enough time. So this is the same code that you saw on the screen, and it will execute, uh, and that will show you the first ten examples um, of the. Rita data sets. So what it does, it starts at one airport, CLE, and it will look at all the other airports. And what you can see here is uh, when you would travel from airport CLE to DAL, um, you would, the earliest arrival time would be Wednesday, February 1st at 9 a.m. And this would be the path that you would have taken. So you would have three other airports in between to get to this uh, to this fastest path. Um, yeah, and that's really all there is to it. The tool is open source, so uh, feel free to contribute it, use it, fork it. Uh, that's the URL. Um, yeah, and like I said before, if you want to uh, know more about how Flink is used within ING, I would advise going to this talk by uh, Bas and Martijn. That's it. Thank you. <laughs> Any questions? Hello. Thanks for the talk. It was great. Um, so I was just wondering, I, I know you said at the start that it's built on top of the batch API, but mm -hmm. I was, um, so are these also sort of static data sets that you're using? Yeah. Is it, so is there any um, sort of extension that's going to be made to make, you know, I guess not necessarily streaming into them, but having them sort of updated so that you can do some sort of continuous or you know, uh, go, uh, ongoing temporal analysis? Yeah, so that, that would be great to make it into streaming. Unfortunately, uh, Jelly, which I use for this library, is not in streaming. Uh, so it, it, it wouldn't be that easy to implement. But you could, for example, think of uh, when you have batches, for example, the Rita dataset, which has a batch of data every month, you could just throw in uh, the, 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 the month of data and then the results into the next batch to create a semi-streaming uh, solution. But it still does batches. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, that's cool. All right. Thank you. I will. Other questions? So, nice talk. 
Um, my question connects with another talk it was yesterday about uh, graph processing using uh, OpenCypher, I think was the yeah. library. Uh, we think we can have like an extension in these kind of query languages for graphs that they welcome this uh, temporal abstraction so that we can actually have declarative temporal graph processing. Um, yeah, I think you can definitely do it. I also uh, saw the talk. Um, yeah, I, I think you can do that. I'm not sure how at the moment, but uh, yeah, it would be pretty, uh, pretty good to have that because currently you are writing lots of code to uh, do simple operations. Any other questions? No? And thank you for your time.